It's always nice when smartphone manufacturers do something different and the Yota phone does exactly that by arriving to the Android party with not one but two displays, a front facing LCD and an e-ink screen at the back. It's not the prettiest smartphone and it's a little chunky. Its plastic body feels solid enough but we don't like its cheap feeling plastic power button which cleverly hides the micro SIM slot. Now you can't miss those huge bezels and that it's unnecessarily tapered towards the top but we won't be too harsh on it, after all it is cramming in two separate screens, something that doesn't currently exist on the market. The e-ink screen blends in smoothly enough but that puts the camera in an unconventional position, presumably to pave the way for the touch sensitive area underneath which also exists on the front, hence the huge bezel. The front facing 4.3 inch 720p LCD screen isn't the sharpest but it's bright with decent viewing angles and colours aren't oversaturated and while its whites are pretty decent, its blacks are nowhere near as deep as we'd like. The Yota Phone's 4.3 inch e-ink display has a passable 360 by 640 pixel resolution that pales in comparison to the Kindle Paperwhites and text on the e-ink screen tends to be a little blurry at times which is disappointing. Now as mentioned earlier, it's not a touchscreen, instead you use the touch sensitive area below for navigation. For example, a double tap locks and unlocks a special live wallpaper screen which refreshes weather, battery life and the time. Now this screen is the only live page that can be viewed on its e-ink display. You can't navigate Android on it, play games or use apps, but of course that's not the point. The e-ink screen is meant to supplement the main LCD display and it's a nice touch being able to check the time and remain in battery without having to turn on the main screen. A two finger downward swipe pastes the screenshot onto the e-ink display which can be useful for things like shopping lists or maps to save on battery by keeping that display off. The Yota phone also comes preloaded with a number of apps designed specifically for the e-ink display. The wallpaper app is the best, allowing you to add customizable widgets to a selection of wallpapers or your own. And the useful Bookmate lets you read e-books on the e-ink display and turn pages with swipes in the gesture area. Sadly, the gestures are hit and miss a lot of the time, whether you're frustratingly swiping away to turn pages or double tapping to pull up the live screen, which almost sucks all the fun out of its unique selling point. Then there's Notepad, which lets you pin notes to the e-ink display, while Organizer serves up a handy list of events and appointments during the day, both of which are pretty useful. And lastly, Internet Hub displays Twitter, Facebook and RSS feeds, but again, it's let down by the very frustrating gesture area. And despite its 13 megapixel snapper, pictures aren't massively impressive and don't even come close to the detail offered by the likes of the LG G2. The odd position of the lens itself can get in the way too and occasionally the camera freezes for half a second in between shots, but we quite like its preview feature despite being next to useless. Its dual core 1.7 GHz processor also isn't up there with the best but it runs 3D games like Real Racing 3 without any problems and flicking through apps and web browsing are all slick experiences as long as you're not relying on the dodgy gesture controls. Android purists will enjoy the stock version of Android 4.2, it's just a shame it's so frustrating to actually navigate. Swiping left takes you back, swiping right takes you home, while a long press brings up Google Voice Search which responded pretty quickly to our voice commands. But given its capabilities, simple actions like going back to the home screen can take a couple of swipes. Thankfully, you can bring up the standard on-screen Android navigation bar in the settings. So the Yota phone is definitely not a high-end super phone. It's got an average build, average display, acceptable power and a camera that's outperformed by the competition. But it's not trying to compete with the latest flagships, so we've got to admire it for going outside the box. Now at this stage, we probably wouldn't use it as our daily driver, but we're certainly intrigued enough to want to see more. So for now, it simply remains a mediocre smartphone with one hell of a party trick.